units. This is the first video in our measurements course. And in this video, we'll be talking about units. Once we finish units, then we'll move on to talking about two and three dimensional shapes, where we'll look at different aspects of measuring these shapes, such as the perimeter, area, surface area, volume, and so on. Here's a checklist, and that is to try to associate units with the attributes that they measure. So for instance, length is measured in meters. And then I want you to try to convert between different units in the metric system. All right, let's begin the lesson. When we measure, we use numbers to show a size or an amount. Another way you could think about measurements is that they are numbers that are used to describe some sort of attribute or characteristic about something in the real world. So let's look at some attributes, the question that they ask, and the units that they are measured in. So first we have length. Length is a measure of how long. So if we had a piece of string and we wanted to know how long it was, we'd measure it and we'd get some answer in meters or centimeters, kilometers, so on. Next we have the area and the area asks the question of how much space a shape takes up in a 2D sense. So if you were to draw it on a piece of paper, the amount of paper that the shape took up would be the area. Next, we have capacity. So capacity is how much space an object takes up in a 3D sense. So if we had a real world object and we wanted to measure its capacity, then we are thinking about how much space it might take up in a room. Another word for capacity is volume. And another way of thinking about volume is that it is the amount of liquid that would be required to fill the object completely. Next, we have mass, and mass is a measure of how heavy, and we measure mass in kilograms. Next, we have temperature, and temperature is a measure of how hot, and we measure temperature in degrees. And lastly, we have time. Time is another measure of how long, but we measure this how long in seconds. The metric system is a standard of measurement. It combines these prefixes with a base unit of measurement, such as the gram. So we could have a kilogram, a hectogram, a decagram, a gram, a decigram, a centigram, or a milligram. Now these prefixes are organized from biggest to smallest, with the biggest being the kilo and the smallest being the milli. A key note here is that bigger units require much smaller numbers than smaller units do when they're trying to describe the same measurement. Let's see why this is. So let's imagine that we wanted to fill this yellow rectangle. So we have these pink units and we have the blue units. The pink units are much larger than the blue units. So if I wanted to fill the rectangle with the pink units, it would only take me about two of those. But if I were to use the blue units, it would take quite a few more just to get the same amount. Now to move from left to right in the metric system, we multiply by 10. So one kilogram is 10 hectograms. One gram would be 10 decigrams, one centigram would be 10 milligrams, and so on. Let's see some examples. So first, we want to convert 8 hectograms to grams. So we start at the prefix hecto, and we keep moving across until we get to the base unit. So we have 1, 2. So that means that we need to multiply 8 by 10 two times. So we have eight hectograms equals eight by 10 squared. And this gives us eight by 100, which is 800 grams. So now we want to convert 3.54 kilograms to centigrams. So we start at kilo and we move all the way across until we get to centi. It takes five steps to get us there. So we need to multiply 3.54 by 10 to the five. And this gives us 3.54 by 100,000. And this is 354,000 centigrams. On the other hand, to move from right to left, we divide by 10. 
So we want to convert 6,000 milligrams to grams. We start at milli and we move across to the base unit. That takes one, two, three steps. And so we have 6,000 divided by 10 to the three. So this is 6,000 divided by 1,000 and that gives us six grams. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe here if you want to get the latest from the Caribbean Scholar YouTube channel, or if you're ready, you can use the link in the description to hop onto our website and sign up for one of our premium courses.